In the sneaker world, there are a few shoes that stand the test of time. The ones that do rise above the noise and become true classics, from a quick trend to a staple. In order for a shoe to have paramount success, it not only needs to be adopted by sneaker enthusiasts, but also the general public. A perfect example of such sneakers is the one and only, the iconic, the infamous Nike Cortez. That's right, Vato, the most gangster shoe of all time. The Nike Cortez reaches all the way back to the mid-1960s, way before the shoe became closely associated with LA gang culture, and way before Nike was even Nike and the company's name was still Blue Ribbon Sports, or simply BRS. BRS operated as a US distribution company for the Japanese brand Onitsuka Tiger, a brand we know today as ASICS. In 1966, legendary Oregon track and field coach Bill Bowerman, together with Onitsuka Tiger, designed the predecessor to the Cortez. The shoe was called the TG24. In 1967, Bill Bowerman and Phil Knight decided to change the model name to the Tiger Mexico. You might be thinking to yourself, why the hell would they call a shoe made in Japan for American consumers, Mexico? Well, the change in name was motivated by the upcoming 1968 Olympic Games, which was being hosted in Mexico. Bill and Phil thought the name to be more market friendly. Thankfully, there was disagreements between BRS and Onitsuka Tiger regarding the new name. With the Olympic Games fast approaching, they decided to settle on the name Aztec, inspired by Mexican history and the Aztec Empire. Hold on just a minute though, they changed the name again? Turns out, a German sports company by the name of Adidas had some beef with the name. It appears that using the Aztec moniker on a running shoe was too close to the Adidas Azteca Gold track shoe. Finally, Bill Bowerman and Phil Knight decided to call the shoe the Cortez. Inspired by the Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortez, who in the 1500s defeated the Aztecs in the march on Tenochtitlan. The shoe was received well by serious athletes, and more importantly, the shoe was a hit with casual runners, also known as the jogging movement, a movement that Bill Bowerman helped create. It was the number one best-selling shoe in the history of BRS and Unitsuka Tiger, but behind the scenes, Blue Ribbon Sports and Unitsuka's partnership was deteriorating. In 1971, Blue Ribbon Sports officially changed their name to Nike, and by 1972, Nike broke off all ties with Onitsuka Tiger. So who got to keep the rights to the Cortez? Well, it was decided that both companies could use the shoe style, but only Nike got to use the name Cortez. Thanks to the shoe's massive success, Nike was on the forefront of sporting goods for the first time. This gave the company an immense opportunity to establish themselves as a legitimate brand. The original model for the shoe was in white leather. It had a red swoosh and a blue line in the midsole. A few years later, Nike released a woman's version of the shoe. It was called the Señorita Cortez. One day, a pair of the Señorita Cortez arrived for the Hollywood actress Farrah Fawcett, and she wore them in an episode of Charlie's Angels. Check out this scene from the episode where she's skateboarding with Cortez's on. Okay, got the instructions. The diamonds. Same time. Okay? Okay. This brought Nike wild success and sales went through the roof. Back in 1976, Nike secured their first pro athlete endorsement with Steve Prefontaine and at one point even had Elton John rocking a pair of Cortezas. This was massive exposure for the brand and it perpetuated Nike to the forefront of culture and athletic wear. In the 1980s, the Nike Cortez was becoming increasingly popular among West Coast gangs like the Bloods, Crips, MS-13, and many more. The gang MS-13 in particular actually adopted the Nike Cortez as part of their uniform. Functioning as a sign of allegiance, gang members sported the Cortez and khaki pants as the official outfit for the gang. It is widely known that colors are more than stylistic choices when it comes to gangs like Bloods and Crips. Colors are actually used to signal gang affiliation. For example, Bloods wear red and Crips wear blue, while East Coast gangs like the Latin Kings wear black and gold. Fast forward to the late 80s and early 90s, the rise of gangster rap from the likes of groups like NWA began to have a huge impact on the popularity of the shoe. In the hood, the shoes become known as the Dope Man Nikes, named after the NWA song Dope Man. 
The Nike Cortez was released nationwide and it reached millions, but it was the city of Los Angeles that would identify with the shoe the most. In recent years, the Nike Cortez has become less notorious. Still worn by hip-hop artists and celebrities around the world, the Cortez continues to be rocked by fashion-savvy people, and the shoe is constantly being celebrated by LA artists like Mr. Cartoon and Kendrick Lamar, both who have their own signature model. This year marks the shoe's 46th anniversary. The Cortez is an iconic shoe that will never stop serving up new colorways, many of which go on to become collector's items. At various stages in its success, the Nike Cortez has become the official shoe of the jogging movement, the streets of Los Angeles, gangs, and who knows what's to come. There is no doubt that the Nike Cortez is a foundational piece of footwear's past and future. I doubt that these shoes will ever go out of style. What do you guys think? Do you guys like the Nike Cortez? Have you ever owned a pair? Do you still associate it with gang culture? Please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.